It's daybreak on Arise News and it's time for the press preview. A first look at what's on the front pages as they arrive. With this day, uh, sister publication this morning leading with the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, as he berates Canada on double standard over protest. Also, MFLA targets 10% increase in agriculture funding by 2024. And above the nameplate this morning, Buhari, Jonathan, Northern Governors, Obaibena, others condole Tambor Sultan over Magajin Garin's death. Let's take a look at the front page of a punch leading with fuel cells for 400 naira per liter in Abuja. Others, scarcity persists in Lagos. Marketers still struggling to return adulterated petrol to NNPC. Corporation pleads for patience, says fuel queues will end soon. The Nation newspaper, hashtag and SARS, the federal government renews battle with Twitter. Microblogging agency accused of double standards in Canada's truckers' protest. And the CBN forecloses forex rebate for all pr produce exporters. Olu Badon to be Balogu picks name. PDP, APC share FCT councils equally. And senators' reps protest proposed exclusion from APC convention. And then during Nigerian Tribune this morning, strike all eyes on ASU as union leaders hold marathon meeting to announce decision today while NANS to the federal government is urging the federal government to avert strike at all costs. And uh, Ukrainian ambassador is criticizing defense, uh, the UK's defense secretary as crisis deepens along its borders. The independence puts their headline strictly as Ukraine hits back against UK's rhetoric on Russia. International paper here, The Guardian, damning race report reveals vast inequalities across health service. And for the press preview, let's bring in Emmanuel Bello, who joins us in our offsite studio this morning. Emmanuel, good morning. Good to see you. Happy Valentine's Day. How are you? One, well, let's three. begin with the This Day newspaper this morning, leading with Minister of uh, Information, Lai Mohammed, who is berating Canada, saying they're having double standards in the way they've approached the anti-vaxxers who, who were protesting in Canada and blocking major roads. Now, he says, and I quote, those who refer to hoodlums who destroyed public and private property in Nigeria under the guise of NSARS as peaceful protesters have tagged similar protesters in their own countries as insurrectionists and terrorists. He's also berating Twitter. He's saying Twitter was supporting the Nigerian NSAS protest. Meanwhile, they blocked, suspended the account of the Canadian protesters. What are your thoughts on this? Because I can see some differences. I mean, a court, there was a court's order to end the protest in Canada on Friday, but the police did not even come to uh, disrupt the protest up until Sunday. There was no violence. People were arrested, but none of the arrests was violent. But here in Nigeria, the NSAS protests, if you recall, the destruction of property began after October 20, 2020, after what was what is now tagged the Lekki shooting in Lagos State, Emmanuel. Yeah, I think uh, part of the annoyance will be that what you just what you just raised now, the parallel uh, that he's trying to draw, you know, between you know between uh, uh, what happened in the answer. I, well, I I I just feel that uh, Lai Mohammed doesn't really need this. He doesn't need to stir up any kind of controversy. Besides, nobody wants to see another Twitter war again. We, uh, they've gone past through that. Uh, Twitter is complying now with some of the conditions uh, that they've given it. So um, bringing back memories of those Twitter crises and uh, also, I mean, I don't know what is so necessary about uh, his comment you know drawing those parallels between what what's happening in canada and what's happening um yeah here in in the country he but of course what he's saying is that he's talking about double standard and Keiji, you're right uh, i don't even see how uh, the two protests are like uh, there have been protests all over the world and what everybody is saying is that let all protests be done in civilized way let uh, the police 
uh, not clam down on, you know, uh, protests are very, very civil things to do. Uh, so, you know, it's and the democratic uh, right of people to, 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 to protest, and that's what you are finding in places like Canada, uh, where those anti vaccines uh, uh, agitators are doing. So, I really don't know what uh, parallel is trying to draw. I really don't. Know. He also said that he's not gloating, that he's not laughing at Canada, because Canada, of course, supported those pro uh, protests too while they were going on, but it's like he's not gloating, he's not um, uh, laughing at them. But like you rightly pointed out, uh, we don't we are not seeing the horrid and horrible images of police brutality clamping down on people, you know, and those uh, terrible shootings that uh, happened at, at Lake Toga. So we're not seeing any of that. So I wonder why anybody want to draw some kind of um, uh, parallels, of course. But by and large, I think a whole lot of people weigh on this. We say we really don't need uh, uh, those, uh, you know, those. Nobody wants to see another Twitter war because Twitter is bound to maybe uh, respond to this. And nobody wants to see those uh, long days, uh, long months. Uh, where no uh, people couldn't use uh, access uh, Twitter and all of that, and of course, recently uh, governments uh, brokering some kind of understanding with Twitter. It was a relief for everyone. Why Lai Mohamed chose to use um, the ca Canadian crisis uh, to bring this back? I think it is a bit curious. Let's start with the front page of our sister publication this day, this morning, and the eulogies have continued to pour in for the late magazine Garin Soko, uh, Sokoto. Hassan Danbeba, who unfortunately passed away at the age of 50. Um, the likes of, I mean, just look at the names there on the front page of this day, uh, from President Buhari to former President Jonathan to Northern Governors to the editor-in-chief uh, uh, editor uh, of uh, This Day Arise News Group, uh, Prince Undukal Baigbena, uh, condoling with his family, the Sultan, it, it speaks to the kind of person the magazine Garin Sokoto was, doesn't it? Tell us about this person. Yeah, actually, and, uh, and even if you don't know him in person, you've never met him, when you listen to these tributes, you begin to get uh, an understanding. And for us uh, in this day, or in the Arise family, you know it's also personal to us because he was a non-executive member of uh, the editorial uh, but so he was he was practically one of us so that that brings it really close home and you can understand if uh, the, the chairman prince nduka obiabena is on this uh, again again so it's this are, so for some of these people it's very very personal uh, this is somebody that has had and if you may, if you have met him in, in real life you will get the sense of the kind of person he is his major his, his stature uh, especially in in the in business cycle in private cycle also, also in traditional cycles uh, such uh, apart, apart from those that huge, you know, statue, uh, physical uh, presence of his. Uh, he was also just almost everything that everyone has been saying. So you can understand the outpouring of grief uh, from former President Jonathan uh, to the current administration uh, that sent a delegation and governors all over. The, those tributes I can assure you, uh, at this one, will we, we not stop uh, today or tomorrow. Uh, they will still uh, keep coming and it's, it's just uh, to show you the tremendous, uh, you know, uh, 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 respect and love uh, people had for the magazine Gary and that this is this is one irreparable loss but then we take comfort in what uh, one of the sheikhs uh, in Sokoto yesterday said uh, that look uh, it's up to God to give and up to God to take uh, but left for everyone this is a man that we really really you know need especially now that uh, we're on the threshold of a transition and uh, his effort is, um, he, he practically died in active service because he was, he was actually on a mission before uh, this happened. And uh, it was sudden, uh, but like uh, the paper also reported yesterday, he passed on in glory. Emmanuel, the Nation newspaper now, uh, PDP, APC share FCT councils equally. Now, of the millions of people who live in Abuja, only a few thousand sauntered to polling stations uh, to cast their votes. What do you think is the reason for this considerable apathy? How do we get people to care about these council elections? Or perhaps they're looking forward to the big one, as the case would be. Uh, that's the presidential vote. 
No, I don't think that actually it's a case of just looking forward to the big one and so not taking, uh, because this is a very, very important election too for uh, residents of, uh, of, 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 the, of the FCT of Abuja and anybody who is a voter. But you're right, uh, that turnout was really low and um, that's what seem, everybody seems to be talking about, apart from the big story that came out of it, the fact that the PDP and the APC practically shared the, uh, those, uh, those votes, 3-3, uh, three, three, almost like a draw if this were a match. So, um, yes, th that's also capture. Uh, attention with even PDP, you know, uh, uh, seeing itself as the ultimate winner in this, you know. Um, if you consider that this is Abuja, this is the seat of power, the FCT minister is APC, the, the president, of course, the leader of the party, and yet PDP was able to eke out uh, that, uh, 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 you know, victory. The PDP is beating his chest with uh, Chairman Ayu saying that this is a, this are signs of things to come, talking about signs of things to come. Uh, the voters' apathy aside, uh, it seemed for the PDP that this is a good sign to read that, look, if we can make head, we're already also saying that, uh, you know, they are going to repeat the same fate in the elections coming ahead. Um, AKT, uh, as one of those elections. So saying that um, uh, these elections uh, clearly show that uh, the PDP under his watch uh, is already bouncing back. And there are people who say that uh, the, the PDP outing was uh, tre uh, tremendous. Uh, not that it's, it's something really entirely new, because uh, if you look at the voting pattern of, of Abuja, uh, you understand that uh, this, uh, this results makes some kind of sense, maybe following almost a known uh, established uh, pattern. But then uh, in, this, in the capital itself, that is a tickly uh, APC in terms of the powers that be around here, uh, you know that the PDP has got, uh, uh, you know, uh, boosting rights or gloating rights uh, this morning uh, when it's reporting that, look, it's done very well against the APC, uh, that they, sh they share these votes almost equally. And so that for many people, that is what they'll be looking at. And already, Chairman, are you saying that this, uh, for him, uh, is a good sign? Uh, a good omen, something good uh, that will happen down the line in Kenneth, uh, 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 what you said, is the big part uh, election coming up, uh, up ahead. Uh, PDP very hopeful that this has set the tone for its uh, launching back and its return. Well, Emmanuel, on the Nigerian Tribune this morning, the headline, strike all eyes on ASU as they continue that to the meeting that they've been having and they're going to come up with a decision early today we expect and as today is a day of love they have no love like Adesua mentioned last week some people might be heartbroken some students who are the academy is going to be disrupted and this is a very sensitive topic to strike or not to strike because ASU wants to take a stance. Uh, the federal government has not been keeping up to the agreements over the years with the union. Meanwhile, also striking a balance as not to disrupt much of the academic calendar of students of Nigeria, Emmanuel. Yeah, well, that's the, that's the balance that uh, they seek to, uh, uh, everybody seek hope that, you know, something, uh, you know, there will be some balancing acts there, you know. And like you say, on, on a day that everybody is talking about love, you saw what this day uh, did on the front page of its paper. Those, those love stories, those big love stories, the president, the vice president, and some other big shots displaying their love. Uh, yeah, you know, on the front page of, uh, of, of this day. So it's a day of love, but for us to, uh, like we are drawing the parallel here, uh, they, it's not such a love story between it and the federal government. But uh, there are other voices, even within Labour, saying just like what you just said now in Kachi, that look, uh, ASU needs to also consider the disruption of the academic year, the psychological trauma, uh, you know, that, that students go through, not just students, but parents, uh, the, the confusion uh, involved in it. Uh, so the, such appeals, you know, have been made to ASU again and again uh, by people. And as, as they go into their, all their meetings from last night, uh, I'm sure uh, they'll be conscious of this appeal from even inside labor and, of course, well-meaning people telling them that, look, uh, well, they have to be very considerate. But they, again, they will also, you know, the pushback is that, well, they, it's not their fault. If you, if you have to talk to anybody, talk to the federal government that has continuously, uh, like in one, one paper reported, dribbled them over the years. And they are not, I think it's the Tribune that actually used the word dribbling uh, last week. So uh, the FG that has dribbled them over the years. And so uh, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't blame them. Don't put the blame on them. So they will always say that. But of course, again, uh, in Kichi, yes, to your point, there are people that will say, look, maybe you need to consider uh, students, you need to consider parents, you need to consider the trauma, uh, the psychology of this whole thing, and not just uh, the issues or the demands uh, they are making. But then, again, that's the strike or the balance that uh, they must uh, find a way of striking. 
Indeed, once again, the Nigerian students and the entire education community waits with bated breath. Thank you so much, Emmanuel Velo, for the review with us this morning of the papers. Yeah.